So there's going to be there's going to be next to me. So. Welcome, everybody. Good to see you. Um, my name is Billy Strauss. I know probably most of you, or, or quite a few of you. Um, I was one of the co-founders of Next Stage Arts Project back at the beginning. <laughs> I was curious, um, just for the quick show of hands, who, who was not in town in 2010? So a pretty, pretty, okay, so that's a, that's a big chunk of the audience. So for the people who were here, some of what's going to be discussed tonight is, uh, you know, will be familiar because if you were here, you remember the things that sort of precipitated or happened around the time that the project was, was started, specifically the two fires across the street. Um, but um, if you weren't here, this will all, you know, we'll have... Uh, a, a good historical um, sort of overview, I guess, of, of how the project got started and um, sort of how we ended up where we are now. Um, so um, I think when Keith first approached me or uh, approached us about the idea of doing this event, I was a little bit reticent because it felt a little bit um, like he's like, yeah, we're going to do this, you know, sort of... Uh, uh, recognition of the people who helped start Next Stage, and we're going to do these portraits, which are, by the way, hanging out in the lobby on the second floor if you haven't seen them, which are actually beautiful. Um, and uh, Mitch Weiss, who I don't know, is Mitch here? I don't know if Mitch is here. A uh, community member who took these portraits uh, probably like two years ago at this point. Um, it felt a little initially to me like, um, you know, we. So why, why do we need to sort of revisit the founding of Next Stage and hang pictures of some of the people that were sort of important at the beginning? And Keith, like, helped me to sort of see that, um, you know, this isn't so much about the recognition of what happened back then, although that's a piece of it, but it's really how we take the story that started in 2010 and the, uh, the birth of the project and how that has kind of informed the community since then, and maybe most importantly, and if you know Keith, do most of you guys know Keith? Well, yeah, yeah. If you know Keith, like, <laughs> Keith is not a guy who's like sitting around thinking about like the past that much. I mean, he does think about the past, but he is like a future vision guy. So, you know, this is all about how we take kind of what started as a community project. Um, with a group of folks who came together with the idea that we could repurpose this building, which had been a church um, for 150 years, um, and turn it into a new kind of you know, community hub gathering center and kind of reinvigorate the center of the village. Um, but it, it's really about um, 
you know, not so much in my mind the birth of the project and that moment in time, which is kind of a binary event, like, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a good thing to be able to celebrate anniversaries, but the reality is that this project is extremely fluid and really has been since day one, and it's really about the people that have come forward since and continue to come forward, and the artists and the community members, so many of whom have been just, you know, integrally involved in Next Stage. And we just, we, there's no way this works without all, all of those pieces. So I, I do want to definitely recognize and honor um, the co-founders and the folks who were there at the beginning. And I'm actually just going to read down the list. I think a, a bunch of us are here. Um, and these are the folks whose pictures are out in the hall. But I also want to say that this is by no means an exhaustive list of the people who have been so crucial to getting a project like this off the ground and to where it is today, which has kind of exceeded any of our hopes and dreams at the beginning. I mean, I don't think any of us had an idea that we would be here 10 or 12 years later w with the I intense variety of programming and the sort of community engagement that has happened. And I have to say that in the last couple of years since Keith and Tahila and their family moved to town, I mean, it's a remarkable thing what goes on here. And um, certainly incredibly grateful to be part of it and also incredibly grateful to the whole community and all of the people who are part of it and have been. So I'd just like to recognize, maybe you guys, you want people to stand? Yeah. Okay. If you guys don't mind standing, I'll read the list quickly. Maria Basescu, who many of you know. <laughs> maybe we should hold our applause till the end. But I will say quickly, Maria was the original executive director at Next Stage um, in the job <clears throat> before the, <clears throat> excuse me, before he, Keith was was even a, a, a twinkle in our eye. Um, Chip Greenberg, who I know is here somewhere because I saw him, you know, Chip who designed this space, um, which was you know looks easy now, but I'll tell you at the time it was it was it was a puzzle. Michael Wells. I mean, Michael's contribution to this project is, I, I don't, wouldn't even know where to begin to, to try to, I mean, it couldn't be overstated because Michael has, has been here since day one and during, if any of you were around during the renovation, you know that Michael was out there every single day riding herd on the construction crew and getting the work done and that's only part of what he's done in this project, so <laughs> forever grateful to Michael. John Burt, who's up here with me. Um, John's contribution, again, and I probably shouldn't go on too long because I could say a lot about everybody, but um, John's contribution as, as um, you know, an experienced uh, and extremely wise um, producer of uh, theatrical events and also his wisdom around community and community engagement has been enormously impactful here. Um, Jackie Walker, who is no longer sadly with us, but Steve Anderson, who is here somewhere, um, we definitely, we, we very much honor Jackie in everything that goes on here. Um, Jackie was there at the very beginning and, you know, wagged her finger at me a few times, like, you better not do that and you better do that. And she was usually right. <laughs> um, Paul Brune, who many of you probably don't know, but who was also instrumental in the project and whose photograph is out there, who was the head for years of the Preservation Trust of Vermont and without whom there would have been no next stage because we, we simply would not have been able to figure out the puzzle of getting it funded. Julian McBrown. Where's Julian? Hey. Many of you guys know Julian. Um, also integrally involved from day one in every aspect of the project and especially in helping figure <laughs> Again, without Lisa, there's no next stage, so I don't know what else to say <laughs> about that. Eric Bass, I don't think Eric, I think Eric's away. Um, all you guys, or many of you probably know Eric and Inez Bass. Uh, Eric's uh, vision around theater and community um, was really integral at the beginning um, and informed a lot of the thinking at Next Stage. Barry Stockwell, who's here somewhere. 
Uh, you know, Barry, too, just has, you know, been here, I think, before day one. Um, and, I, you know, Barry always had a dream of promoting and producing shows in this space. Um, and uh, there's no question that without Barry, we just would not be here. We wouldn't have been able to figure out how to get it done. And Barry's commitment and, and skill around um, managing the building and also his skill around promoting and producing music and bringing artists into the community um, is amazing and continues to inform what goes on here you know, month in and month out. Um, the other thing I had just wanted to mention before I pass it off to Keith is that uh, Keith, as part of this project, had some of the founders, or I guess most, um, gather at my studio and we recorded um, some audio, uh, I guess audio tracks you'd call them, which are now I think linked from the Next Stage website that kind of in, in some more detail kind of revisit um, uh, sort of how we got here and some of the, the, the drama and, I don't know, intrigue around um, how the project got off the ground. So that's, that's all available on the website and as part of, part of this overview uh, recognition of, of the beginning of Next Stage. Um, I guess in closing, I just would like to thank everybody again for being here and thank everybody for their you know, commitment to making this project um, what it is. And I also wanted to mention, even though his photograph isn't on the wall, Herve Pelletier, who I saw out in the um, second floor lobby, um, and also Rebecca Waxman. I mean, the thing is, like, there are people that are so instrumental to the project whose pictures aren't on the wall, and I just feel like I, I want to pay homage to those folks, too, because they've been equally as critical to the success and, and viability of the project. So without further ado, I would like to pass it over to Keith Marks, our guru and leader of the moment. Thanks, man. I prepared a speech. <laughs> um, so before I, I enter this, I just want uh, to, to kind of give you sort of like a, the idea here is that, you know, um, Billy, Billy was the one who sort of gave me the nod to be able to move my family up here. And so this is really um, a celebration of the past and the people that made this place, this place possible. Um, and really, the idea is to carry forward that energy to the possibilities in the future that we have. And you'll have speakers here that kind of outline things that we as a community can come together. And it's really about merging the people who have been here and the new people to be one larger community. So um, I'll uh, jump into this. So sometimes it takes an outside perspective to see what's on the inside. Less than three years ago, I moved my family from Florida to Vermont. Never had this part of the country crossed my path, but as the interview process began to unfold, numerous syn synchronicities began to arise. From the maple syrup at our breakfast table bottled in Brattleboro, it's true, to having a friend who worked at Putney Student Travel, to meeting a woman uh, from Brattleboro who had just moved to Jacksonville during that time. This area seemed to be everywhere I went. This, there is an amazing energy in this place that seems to attract quality people doing amazing things. I wanted to dive deep and learn more. I read the definitive history of Putney from the Putney Historical Society. It's true. <laughs> you all should read it. It's really good. And I made other inquiries to learn the rich history of the region. This project, this evening, is an extension of that effort. This region's zeal for nature and the arts is strong in its history, and I've come to realize that its unique value proposition is the richness of our arts and cultural sector and the people that swim through it. Show me a community of 40,000 people with a Bellows Falls Opera House, Rockingham Arts Project, Putney Craft Tour, Yellow Barn, Sandglass, Next Stage, NECA, NYT, VJC, Vermont Jazz Center, Brattleboro Music Center, uh, the Brattleboro Museum, Insight Photography, Stone Church, Epsilon Spires, Brattleboro School of Dance, River Gallery School, First Proof Press, Mitchell Giddings Gallery, and there are so many more. So the seeds for tonight sprouted from a grant from the Vermont Humanities Council. If I were to move this organization forward, I would need to know its history and its feel its roots. The grant allowed Mitch Weiss to photograph just a few of the many people that made Next Age. Billy recorded the origin stories, and through that process, I came to understand the sparks that created the room we're sitting in this evening are really special. 
It needs mentioning that the portraits hanging in the gallery are only some of the voices that help create this space, but by no means does it capture the full magnitude of community support. I wish to thank Virg Virginia Scholl, Anita Child, Rebecca Waxman, Herve, and the other voices that shaped our community, many taking on the mantle of some of the original board members. There was no blueprint for this. Those recording sessions profoundly changed me and the way I view this organization. Most arts organizations are founded around an artistic medium and then a community forms around it. A space for theater, a room for music, and then a community forms. But Next Stage was unique in its origin story, was in reverse. The congregation that once was housed in this building could no longer maintain the building. They reached out to the Putney Historical Society due to the fact that they were managing the reconstruction of the Putney General Store after two fires, one of those a confirmed arson attack. It was the time of the Great Recession, not to mention Hurricane Irene thrown in for good measure. The downtown core of this village was in peril. Understanding it would be too much for a group of volunteers to manage two large-scale projects, Lisa Papazian from the Putney Historical Society reached out to a few community members and asked what could be done with this building. A fundraiser community ceremony was held to pay their respects to the general store in this very room. Lead paint hung from the ceiling, and the audience sat on horsehair pews, and the flat floor created less than ideal sight lines. But that evening sparked hope. This former church could be utilized to be what every church in New England was once referred to, the meeting house. Next Stage was created with two overarching functions. One, to preserve a space in the downtown village as a meeting place for our community, and two, to serve as an economic driver for Putney core businesses. The arts were merely the means to those ends. Various experts in architecture, acoustics, construction, programming, and countless other areas banded together to lend their expertise, resources, and time. There were disagreements over certain aspects of the building, it's an understatement, but as if guided by a larger plan, Nextane was born from that creative tension. The organization has grown tremendously since then, and it's imperative that we continue to share a collective memory of these roots. For longtime residents, we must keep this energy at the forefront. For newcomers, it's important we engage in these memories to preserve our shared sense of continuity. Geographic proximity alone does not equate to community. It is the strength of our personal bonds and our ability to have shared experiences, a shared history that create community. Tonight is an opportunity to thread established strands with newer ones to renew our community ideals and move forward with a fresh purpose. My intention with this evening is for us to honor the people, but more importantly, to honor that same community spirit that created this opportunity for us to sit and commune tonight. We sit in the present moment of their future aspirations. In effect, we honor these people, but the intention is to pull out that thread of community resolve, spirit, and bring it into 2023. We face daunting global, national, and regional challenges. Resilience and strong personal bonds will be the way forward for us to imagine a more vibrant region. It is this spirit that we celebrate tonight, a vision for a better region so that in a decade's time, we will have created something for future generations of Putney residents to be proud of. Tonight, you will hear a bit of the past, a touch of the present, and a glimmer of the potential future we have. The first half of the evening will be looking at the past and its impact on the present. The second half will be an opportunity for all of us to see our present opportunities as they are before us to create a stronger future. I sincerely, I sincerely value everyone's time for showing up. I understand it was a very vague invitation, but I figured if I, I, figured if I fed you all, you could complain less. Um, and so, so with that, we'll jump sort of back in time and invite John Burt to the microphone. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Keith. What an extraordinary account of, of, of a past and, and a foundation for the future. Um, Keith invited me in yesterday to sort of go over um, how I might be able to talk about the past in, relation, in, in, in five minutes. And so I did some notes on my phone, and I very cleverly left my phone at home. So I'm going to turn to you, Keith, to um, be the timekeeper and get out the cane at five minutes and pull me. I have a scarf. You can pull, you can pull me off. Um, so um, in some ways, I don't really need notes, because here we all are. 
um, and the 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 buzz and excitement of being together in person downstairs just now for a community supper really speaks to the origin, as, as Keith has referred to, of, of um, why and how we need gathering places. Um, the, this, you know, the, the, meeting, the meeting halls, the meeting, the meeting houses um, of New England that Keith made reference to is where we gathered in New England. And there are other um, places, houses of worship around the, wor around the country where people gather and have gathered. And many, many, many of those um, or um, buildings originally built for some sort of religious um, practice have gone out of business. Um, the Pew Trust um, Research Center um, accounts acknowledges that almost a fifth of Americans have no identification any longer with, with religion, which is how we once gathered in the and these buildings, of course, are sort of the, the monument of that. But and what is the, the question that we hold, held at the time and um, Lisa and others asked is say, where are we going to gather? If we're not, if we don't have a place for community suppers, we don't have a place for AA meetings, we don't have these gathering spots, what are we gonna do? And who are we going to be as a civil society? We could never have guessed that, um, you know, within 10 years of our uh, imagining this place that we would be faced with a global pandemic of the, of the extraordinary um, impact that has had on all of us globally. And particularly in the area not only of loss and of um, um, loss to um, illness, but the loss of connection, the loss of actually being in civil contact with one another. And I think we're just learning, we're just beginning to get how important live interface is. As a former producer of, of theater in New York for many, many years, and both at, in, the, in the urban context and the rural context, the excitement that an audience generates in the, the vibration that I can feel and we can feel together is what makes performing and performance and art making possible. That link of the, the um, live audience, there's nothing like it. And so we, um, in the rural context, that is such a critical piece, and it's a daily practice. It's a, it's you know, it was once where we came to worship, if you will, but practice more importantly of being connected to those that you don't know as intimately that are your neighbors, that aren't your necessarily your family, aren't your best friends, that maybe you don't even like, but and we are in connection with one another. And that's one of the places of our future, is how do we connect? How do we stay connected? And what are the ways in which we can ce celebrate those connections? So I think um, I, a place like Next Stage, of course, is fulfilling that promise. Um, in thanks to Billy and others who helped guide us toward Art Place America, which was a 10-year um, grant cycle created by several really innovative um, foundations um, from in the country to celebrate, who really believed in and knew that the arts needed to have the support to, to be the gathering places, to be the conveners of our future, to be solidly acknowledged as part and central to our commerce not as something nice if, but actually central to. So I really invite you to go online and read the book that came out of the 10 years, after a 10 year sunset period of, of grant making up to the tune of $150 million. And we were very happy a recipient of one of the early grants in 2014, or 20, was it 2014? I think so, yeah. Um, but go online and read the book that it summarizes the extraordinary efforts of really understanding the role of arts and art making and presenting in rural and urban contexts. It is just, it sort of blow you away and about how this body, this place, you all, us, have been a part of that journey. So I think I can probably feel the cane coming pretty soon. 
um, if, I, if I know myself well enough, um, but to say I'm delighted to be here with you, to be in almost eye contact with you, and to see your beautiful smiles downstairs was so rewarding. So here we all are, and let's go forward. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Heather Brubaker, and I am uh, in my second year as a board member here at Next Stage. And um, we have two young kids in the community. It's my husband, Zach, over there. And um, there are many of you that I haven't met, so um, I'm delighted to, to see you and to, and to be here. Um, it's really an honor. Um, so Keith asked me to talk a little bit about this moment at Next Stage as someone who is both uh, relatively new to the community and new to Next Stage and about um, what it sort of meant for me to become connected with this organization um, and this place. So my first experience with Next Stage was when um, Keith, who I met because our kids were in preschool together, um, asked me to participate in a Meet Your New Neighbor series. And for anybody who didn't experience those, this was something that um, Keith dreamed up kind of mid-pandemic um, when we were all really alone and really cold. Do you guys remember that part? Yeah. Um, and he uh, invited people from the community to, to come and greet newcomers, people like me who had, who had just moved to the community. And um, in my first Meet Your New Neighbor, actually, um, Mike and... Kim were on that call also, and um, it felt like a miracle, really, at that moment um, in time to, um, to, to come onto this Zoom and discover that there were all these lovely people who I couldn't hang out with in person, but who were really interested to know who we were and why we had moved to Vermont and what we were doing and what we thought about it, and um, to hear about Kim and Mike's story and everything that they were doing and how they came to the general store. Um, so my first experience of Next Stage was really an experience, actually not of arts, but of welcome and of community and of connection and of everything that John Burt was just talking about. And, um, you know, after that, I was hooked. Um, so for me, you know, Next Stage is, is that meeting house, right? It is a place where we come to meet each other, um, both in a literal sense and in a metaphorical sense, right? We meet each other through art, we meet each other through encounter, and we meet each other through creativity. Another moment that really um, stood out for me was um, one of the first outdoor things that I went to, which was when Keith brought a DJ up from, from New York, and it was a warm October afternoon. We were behind the Putney Inn in that giant field, and um, it was just a giant dance party. And I remember standing under this tree, and the warm afternoon sunlight was on my skin, and there was this fabulous music happening, and I just danced, and it was like I had been reborn. And um, I, I still, it's so moving to think about that moment, um, and for me, that moment really captures um, the next stage magic, that really special confluence of art and community and Multi multiple generations of people dancing in the same space um, and of natural beauty, right, of, of bringing these elements together in a way that I think is so unusual. Um, so there's the community, there's the magic, um, and then there's also the travel, the being transported. My first show that I came to in the theater here after our very COVID cautious family got to the point where we were willing to come inside um, was an Indonesian music ensemble that had come from Boston, right? Yeah. And I remember walking into the theater and all around me were these incredibly ornate, beautiful instruments, these big golden towers, these platters of fruit. It smelled fragrant. And it was like I had walked out of the Vermont winter into another place, into another country. 
And then I got to sit and just bathe in this incredible music that was unfamiliar to me, right? This is not anything that I knew. Um, but I really went to a different place. And afterward, I stayed and listened to the leader of this ensemble talk about why he came here, why he teaches college students this music, the spiritual value for him of doing this work and of transmitting it to, to other students. And I went home changed and inspired by a couple of hours that were five minutes from my house. And all of that, um, for me, just um, is the feeling of this place and, and the magic of this place um, and what makes being here, um, I think, different than other places, um, special in a way that um, you all know because you're here, <laughs> um, but um, really um, has surprised and, and delighted me and, and moved me um, and is part of what makes me so honored to serve on this board and really excited about trying to um, give our community as many opportunities as possible to access what's here um, through a bunch of programs like having our um, passes at all the libraries in Wyndham County, um, through distributing tickets at Putney Food Shelf um, because we believe that art is food for the soul. And, um, and also to make sure that our, our work, um, you know, expands beyond the building, that it is, um, all, as it has already in a million ways, but that it um, is outside, that it's in our schools, that it's at the library, that it's at the retreat farm, that it's at the Brattleboro um, Art Museum, um, you know, that it's at Gallery Walk, right? That, that um, next stage really is um, growing and expanding in so many ways, and it's just thrilling to get to be a part of that, right? To be rooted here, and also to be feeling that that kind of breath of expansion um, as we are out and about in the world again, and and looking to to grow um, and to to continue connecting in all sorts of exciting ways. So, yeah. Hi, everyone. <laughs> We're good. I'm Lisa Papazian from the Putney Historical Society. Thank you. Um, and I'm here to talk about take the way back machine way back. Um, <laughs> Keith really actually did a great job of do, connecting the dots and uh, sort of giving the outline of the chronology, which is what I was going to do. So I'm going to give some <laughs> in five minute hook I need, but um, a couple of snapshots of what the what what happened back then and and actually that this is very much a project of economic development, community development, and community and going back to 2008. Before the um, crash, <laughs> the economic crash, um, this village was already experiencing some shrinkage in terms of businesses closing. And I have to say, for those of you who weren't here in 2008, it was a very different looking village, village center. The buildings were the same for the most part, but there were a lot more retail businesses right down here, right, right across the street. And we were worried about losing one of a dozen that we had down here. So if you think about what's here now, that's different. Um, that feels different. I mean, that, Greg, you're here somewhere, Greg Winchester, one of the few businesses <laughs> that is still here that was here then, um, like continuity. <laughs> Woo! And the general store. So in the um, spring of 2008, the general store, which like all general stores, most general stores in Vermont had been um, privately owner, owner occupied and owned um, for ever. It, it's one of the oldest general stores, if not the oldest general store in Vermont, 1796. Had a fire, accidental. Um, electrical fire burned the roof off. And 
it was a struggle because there, the owner at the time was had already um, gone into a lot of debt to acquire the building. Um, the insurance was perhaps not going to cover the way he really wanted it to be restored and um, rebuilt. And um, that pesky guy, Paul Brune, who I wish he could still be here with us, but we've <laughs> lost Paul. Paul Brune of the Preservation Trust, it's all his fault, really. Um, <laughs> he came to town the next day because this historic building was in trouble, a historic village was in trouble. And um, through many, long story, but cut to the chase, he convinced he, the Historical Society because there wasn't any other nonprofit that made sense, that it should be a nonprofit owned, that we should own the store, that we should hold it on behalf of the community and make sure it was always a store because it was the, it was the anchor of the downtown. That's kind of radical, it seemed radical to us, but we, we, we went with it. Um, and we were in the process of, we had bought the, bought the building and were, had gotten grants and we're in the process of restoring the building and really celebrating this idea of kind of a completely new to us anyway, form of community development. Um, sort of a, anyway, we, we were in the process of doing that. We had gotten the outside done, the shell was beautifully um, intact and restored and we were about to work on the inside of the building. Um, and during that year while we were working on it, um, as Keith mentioned, the congregation that, um, that owned this building after 230 years possibly, or quite a lot <laughs> of time, had to finally throw in the towel. They could no longer afford to keep up the building and their congregation had dwindled to just a few people who were regularly coming. And so they turned to us, the Historical Society, and said, we'd like to give you the building. And for some reason, we said, okay, <laughs> we have that building. We'll take this building too. <laughs> but, you know, so, okay, we have this building now. Um, but for the same reason that they couldn't take care of it, it had a lot of issues. Um, what were we going to do with it? We weren't sort of thinking about that. We were focused over there so much. But um, really, uh, the options were not that many. I mean, we weren't that active a historical society and um, without any kind of support or income stream, well, we could, we could sort of keep it open a few days a year or, uh, you know, just in the summertime, not heat it, hope that the roof doesn't leak. And would that be enough? Could we, could we really do that? And was that good for the community? Well, that question was on the table. And then um, the store was burned down by an arsonist. So we lost all the work we had done, like literally hole in the ground. None of that store was the historic building anymore. And that felt like a kick in the teeth to the whole community, because by that time it had been really a, a community project. So um, we, the community really felt like, uh, felt like gathering. Oh, like we had to have a memorial service kind of for the project, for the building. And we said, well, we have this church. <laughs> we, could, we could meet here. And Eric Bass, um, who's not here, but who uh, uh, lived and operated Sandglass Theater next door, offered to um, help, help put on this event with me. And he, um, and be, you know, so we did. And he literally, I think half the town was on the stage and the other half was sitting where you're sitting, except not quite because everyone was down there where I was speaking, but I was probably over there and on the altar, a very simple old altar on a very rickety old stage. The organ was over there, over there somewhere. Um, hundred year old horsehair cushions, rock hard, fixed, um, fixed pews glued to the ground, nailed to the ground. And um, it was over two hours the program, and people were really having a great time for two hours sitting on those, st <laughs> those stools, the pews, and the, the the sound was really great. And it, you know, Eric and I were sitting on the sidelines and said, "Huh, huh," 
And then it wasn't, an, I think it was when the last act was um, Moonlight Davis, I think. Yes, Moonlight Davis, who was um, an a cappella gospel singer. And he came on the stage and sang Amazing Grace, a cappella. And it was, you know, you could have heard a pin drop. And it was the most beautiful sound. And, you know, we said, oh my God, this place has incredible acoustics, which probably all the congregation knew that for many, many years. But we thought, well, what, could it be um, a theater? Could it be a performing performance space? Well, that question, of course, we called Paul. <laughs> and Paul came down and sat with Eric and I and made, su made some suggestions and, um, you know, suggested we do a feasibility study to ask this question. And so I, I would say that my biggest contribution to Next Stage and the creation of Next Stage was being smart enough to ask the right people to be, um, to volunteer to join us on that feasibility study. We asked people in the performance world and um, many of whom are sitting right here or in the audience and that turned out to be a really great thing because not only do we decide it was feasible and um, Chip Greenberg helped us realize that it was, you know, potentially feasible with architecturally too without losing the his history. Um, but that group was so inspired um, by the process that they turned around and formed Next Stage and formed a nonprofit. So that is the sort of connection. Um, that's the thread. And um, we were eventually able to do this project to really renovate it. Um, but it's, it comes down to this project was as much about theater and performance and music and, and um, the arts as it is about economic development. And we had the general store and we were operating it as a store. It was, it was an economic anchor, but it still wasn't. It's still not quite enough. We need people downtown. We need activity downtown. And that's what this project was really about. So we still need it. And I encourage you all to um, think about what it means to be a community member. It's um, showing up and it's spending your money downtown and you know gathering with your community downtown in the spaces. So we are really lucky that the general store is still going. And, um, and it is, you know, Mike and Kim Costco, um, I'm sorry that you came on <laughs> four months before the pandemic hit. I do, I feel bad about that. But I'm so glad it was you guys because um, you uh, rose to the occasion and just um, have done amazing. And it, of course it's an essential business, uh, duh. That's what we've been talking about this whole time. That's why we've done all of this. And so I'm very glad to pass it on to to Mike, who will share with you what it's like to be there across the street. All right. So uh, we could maybe just review how we got here and what we were doing before we got here. Uh, we, Kim and I, so this, everything I say is Kim and I, because <laughs> these businesses can't be done alone. But back in 2011, I think, we actually revived an old building that was built to be a general store in a small town north of Boston. That was basically Kim's fault because I, didn't, uh, I had no retail experience, but it had a kitchen. And I think in the first news in interview I did, I said, yeah, Kim knows what she's doing. She's gonna have a beautiful shop here and it's got a kitchen. I figure I could cook and it's, you know, I'll figure it out. And after eight years, I mean, we had to start from scratch. There was, that building had been kind of neglected and it wasn't really the center of the community, but it was there to be that. It was built by a Civil War veteran who was very involved in the community. And, you know, it was kind of primed to be what we made it. And by the time we left, it was very active, very beloved. You know, we were just ingrained in the community and we were not really looking to leave. We were on Craigslist looking for furniture to maybe upgrade that store a little bit. And 
Lisa finally put the Putney General Store on Craigslist in the Boston area, and we thought, huh, that sounds interesting. It's, you know, it's a much bigger store, and we'd always think, thought about, well, what would we do after we retire, and then somewhere off in the future, and it was always north, into the mountains, into the woods. We wanted to be someplace, but I had to keep reminding my wife that it has to be someplace if we're gonna have a business, has to have some economic activity. So this fell into a lot of what we were looking for. And then learning the story that you've just heard, it felt like we were purpose built for coming here to do this. I mean, our business was very, very small. It was you know, less than a fifth the size of this place. And our vision and our business plan was to bring all that personal contact that we had with our community. We were very ingrained in that community. Everybody knew us and we would bring that here. So as of now, I think we, we got a very good compliment from one of our customers who came, he came just after we took over the store and the place was not really ours yet, but they were coming to see where we were going. And they just visited us a few weeks ago and said, just walking in the door, the place feels like our small store. It's, it's warm and it's fighting and, you know, to, I, even to me, that's remarkable. I mean, we work hard to make that happen, which is a lot about how we treat our employees. Our employees are very young. There's, we very constantly hire people who have never had a job before. There's a lot of 16-year-olds and we grow them up and everybody in there we treat like family. And they, in turn, are happy and they exude that you know, pleasantness out into all of our customers. And that's in itself is a business plan. There's, you know, the finances behind it, but it all starts with a business like that is meant to be, you know, deeply embedded in the community. So Keith and I have a connection because we came September of 2019. He came in January, I think, just after that. So we were kind of some new faces taking over some important organizations here in Putney. And yeah, then, <laughs> then COVID. So, you know, our business plan went out the window, but what Lisa said is completely true. We just buckled down and did whatever was necessary. We didn't close a single day that entire time. <laughs> And I, and I said in an interview with a, a newspaper or a magazine that that time, as difficult as it was, I mean, there was fear and sickness and anxiety in our employees, in our customers, but just the fact that we did anything we could for any of them. You know, we, we lost a few employees because they were more at risk, so we let them go and did what we could for, for them. Any customer who came in the door or didn't come in the door or couldn't get out of their house, we found ways to service them, you know, as, however they needed it. And, you know, now that we're out of that, this is the first, you know, there was talk of community suppers, but we never saw that. I mean, we've, we've lived in Putney without the community connection that John was talking about, that there's been masks and the anxiety and not come in the store and, you know, it's been, it's been missing for us, but we know, we can see what Putney is. We came here because of, it's an amazing collection of people who live here and the businesses and the, the culture and where, you know, we, we take very seriously the responsibility of what the general store is. And the connection to next stage is very important. Like, the, what Keith has grown this to be, the activity that's here, it, you know, Putney is not the same without, I mean, you, we would never let the general store die. It, you really can't let Next Stage suffer in the same way. It's, th these places are, are critical to the, you know, the network of the community, the fabric of the community. And we talk a lot and we work together a lot. And not to mention we work, it's a very small business community. And it, 
could be larger. You know, there is a history here that there is so much more that Putney could be, but the business community talks all the time. We are connected. We, we know how hard it is. So we appreciate every time somebody walks in the door. That's part of the, the welcoming atmosphere that we don't take anything for granted. Every, the, the food, I know we have an excellent reputation for the food because we prepare it in a way that is honoring the people who come to support us. Every sandwich, I put that, that's part of our training. Every sandwich, we want to be the best that that person has ever had. And if you, put, if, if you set that as a bar, <laughs> you know, it goes for everything that we make. That's kind of how we approach the job, is like we're trying to make it fantastic and affordable, and it keeps everybody fed and happy, and it's, it's an extremely important part of people's lives. It's, you know, there's a, there's a term called the, the third place, which is like you go, you're at home, you have work, and the third place is, you know, an, another critical place that you go every day. So we're part of people's lives, and you know, we we just we appreciate the community to help keep us afloat. It's it, it's just a symbiotic relationship. It's not just a business. It's us and you and everybody else who drives by, and and that's how we treat it. So, you know, I don't want to drag on too much. It, it is very difficult. It's a very complicated business. You know, it's hours, it's long hours. It's co open 12 hours a day, seven days a week, and Kim and I really never get a day off. But we are absolutely willing to do that. And, and it's because of, you know, what goes on around us and the history that brought us to here that, I mean, the hundreds of years of history of the, the general store in itself and the history, the recent history of it burning and the, and the rebuilding of this place and what Putney is on the cusp of becoming. So this VCRD process is, I think, an enormous opportunity. And there are resources kind of streaming through the state and federal government that we could put to some projects that we decide on. So, you know, I'm gonna be there Monday and. Eleni, the diner, and the general store are providing some food, and we're hoping that the word has gotten out, and we just, uh, we take every opportunity, and we support what we have, and we build towards, you know, what, whatever we decide Putney will be, but there's, there's enormous opportunities in front of us, and, and I think that's a good place to stop. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> I'm Amber Paris. Um, I think I'm here tonight as like one foot in the present and one foot in the future. Um, I facilitate a lot of creative community outreach and engagement around town for different organizations, but I'm here tonight as a library trustee. Um, uh, as a member of the Library Strategic Planning Committee, I helped launch some outreach this summer in an, effort to get us, in, an, in an effort to get a sense of where people were at in the community. So we initiated a mapping project. I hope a lot of you saw the map that's downstairs. It was right in front of the food, and I hope you'll interact with it if you haven't already. People were in, invited to place pins in locations in Putney that were important to them and make notes around the border of the map explaining why they chose those locations. So it's really fun to take a look at if you haven't already. The other facet of this outreach and what I'm here to report on tonight is the postcard project. So if you aren't familiar with what the postcard project was, it was modeled on a similar outreach initiative that the Brattleboro Listening Project used several years ago. My board colleagues, Emily and I, came up with four different questions in an effort to try to reach as diverse an audience and just get a sense of what people were grateful for what they were feeling like they were missing since COVID and what they wanted to see in Putney in the future. So we distributed these, po these postcards all over town this summer and we tried to be really mindful of getting as diverse a cross section of the community to report back in on it as possible. We received over 150, 160 responses and counting, I think, right Janice, they're still coming in. And there were several themes that emerged in these responses that start to paint a picture of, you know, a common sentiment among our community. 
So what I'm going to read tonight is a really hyper-condensed version of these responses. Janice Baldwin, who's over here, wrote a really detailed and thoughtful summary of what the responses that have come in are so far. That summary, there are hard copies downstairs, there's hard copies at the library, there's hard copies at the diner, and you can also find it online at the library's uh, website. All right, so... Question number one was, I am grateful to live in Putney because these are some of the responses that came again and again. Beauty of natural environment, a simpler life and a small town feel, a sense of community, local stores, produce and resources, family ties and history. The second question, since COVID, one thing I'm rusty at is socializing, gathering in groups, and hugging. Question three and four saw a lot of overlap in the responses. The questions were, one thing I would change in Putney is, and in three years, I would like to see a Putney where. So the responses to these two questions were, remove or rehab the dilapidated buildings especially Putney Pizza. <laughs> Attract more amenities, especially restaurants, pub, hairdresser. Improve safety with larger police presence, more sidewalks, better markings, less speeding on Main Street and Kimball Hill. Public community green space in the village with a playground. More affordable housing options for middle class folks, fewer Airbnbs. Less divisiveness along ideological, educational, class, and financial lines, and to create a more inclusive Putney where community means everyone. I think I'm under five minutes. I think I win tonight. <laughs> I just keep it down here. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm uh, Nate. I was invited to talk about VCRD, which you might have heard Keith men oh, sorry, Mike mention. Um, it is the Vermont Council on Rural Development, which uh, is having a second meeting at the Putney Central School this Monday, uh, November 14th and they will have supper provided by the diner and by the general store. Um, there will be breakout forums, uh, which this, I mean, I keep hearing the word future and um, opportunity, and this is exactly that. This is an opportunity. Um, there's signs all over Putney. There's flyers everywhere. You might have received a call from me or a bunch of other people about it. Um, and what they're trying to do, what VTRC is trying to do, is gather our community and help guide us in the direction of whatever we want to build, whatever we want our future to be. They will provide us with resources, with the people to contact, um, and that will be the course of the next three months, I believe. Um, what else can I say? I, they have childcare uh, on these events, so if that's something you're concerned about, you can come. Uh, we'll make, you know, we'll make it happen. <laughs> um, but uh, what else? You can also attend on Zoom. Yes, perfect. You can attend on Zoom. <laughs> or uh, <laughs> there is a online link where if uh, you can't show up, you can at least have your, um, you, you can still respond and have your opinion evaluated. Or, you know, <laughs> they, they will accommodate you. <laughs> um, what else? Yes, a youth forum. <laughs> so, I mean, I know that's something I'm personally concerned about is like the youth having a voice in this town because who is our future? It is the youth. Um, and something that I've constantly seen as a young person in this town is my population of people, people 20 to 40, you know, just leaving. They're going to more metropolitan areas. And how do we get those people to stay? have their voices heard, have whatever they want to build this community happen, come true. Good? 
<laughs> you should have. You should have arranged us in height so that we, you wouldn't have had to do this every time. Hi, um, I'm Jeanette White. I can't see any of you at all because my glasses are pretty reflective. Um, so you've heard some pretty inspiring stories here and uh, where we might be headed. Um, Keith asked me to just say a word about some, an infusion of money that's come into Putney. That is the Americ, and I made some notes here because I also have a scarf on, not a cane, but I can go on and on forever, and so I'm trying to um, limit myself, so I made some notes. So this is the American Recovery Plan Act. Everybody calls it ARPA, and what it is is it's federal money that came to towns all over the country based on population. So Putney got the beauty of the money is that it really doesn't have a lot of strings. Most money that comes from the feds or the state has a lot of strings. This really doesn't have strings, and we are free to do with it as we choose. So the select board set up a committee to um, look at the money and to review the, what, to make recommendations to the select board for what we thought what might be the best way to spend this money. The select board makes the ultimate decision. So members, I'm going to tell you who the members are because you'll know many of them. It's Peg Alden, John, Justin Altman, um, Keith Marks, Ruby McAdoo, Vanessa Vedum, Vadim, I'm sorry, myself and our non-voting member, Karen Astley. Um, we let her talk, but we don't let her vote. <laughs> that might be true. <laughs> so the money must be spent by December of 2024. It must be obligated by December of 2024. I'm sorry. So we have a little bit of time. It has to be spent by December of 2026. The committee has been working on thinking a lot about this. We've done a lot of research. We've read town documents. We've read documents from other towns. We've read the federal guidelines. We've um, talked to other people. We've had people come and talk to us, um, trying to figure out the best way that this money can make a lasting impact on Putney. And I should say that we have not come to a decision yet. So I know there are many of you who are anxious and are saying, well, when are we going to get to apply for the money? What are we going to do? How are you going to use the money? The short answer is we don't know. We are going to be listening to the conversations that happened tonight, the VCRD conversations, the um, other conversations that are held in different forums, and we'll put all of that into our thinking and hopefully come up with the best thoughts that we can. Um, <clears throat> and it means that we want input from people. So if you have ideas, thoughts, um, let us know. Our meetings are usually every couple weeks. We've been trying to have them on Thursday nights, the second and fourth Thursdays, but um, there always seems to be issues with that, so I can't even tell you when the next meeting is. We just had one tonight, and we did not settle on a, another meeting yet, but watch. They're all warned. They're publicly warned. They're on the town website, and um, we want your input, so thanks. So you saved the uh, best for last. Yeah. No pressure, right? So I'm Karen Astley, A-S-T-L-E-Y, Putney Town Manager, Zoning Administrator, Finance Director, Delinquent Tax Collector, <laughs> Road Commissioner by default, and there might be some other titles out there. <laughs> And I will say, I don't do it alone. I do have a team at Town Hall, and um, 
you know, the highway department and the fire department. So I'm not gonna take credit for all of it. Um, so Keith asked me to speak a little bit and um, about the past, present, and the future. So I'm just gonna go back a little ways because there are people that probably don't know who I am. Um, I was born in Massachusetts, down in Southbridge, down near Sturbridge, and I'm the second oldest of six, and we grew up with less than some folks. Christmas was um, the local fire department, leaving Christmas dinner and presents at our front door. And we shopped at uh, the local Catholic charities for school clothes. We moved to New Hampshire in 1979, and I was the only one to graduate high school, 1982 out of six kids. I went to CCV for an Associates in Liberal Arts degree. It took me 10 years, folks, to get that degree, but I did it. Um, <laughs> I then moved to Vermont in 1993. I obtained my bachelor's degree in 2016 in um, public administration. And that degree was obtained online from Southern um, New Hampshire University. So my work experience, my first job ever was paper route. And I bought my very own 10 speed bike. From, from earning money. At 15, I worked at the Hinsdale Racetrack as a lead out, and honestly, we worked to pay room and board to help our mom pay the bills, $50 a week. Um, 13 years of my professional career was spent um, between two engineering companies, one in Keene and then one in Brattleboro. I also worked for an attorney doing title research, and then I was inducted into municipal government in 2013 through October 2017 in the town of Westminster as an administrative assistant working for Russ Hodgkins. Um, I came down to Putney. I was hired in 2017 in October, knowing I would contract to become the town manager March of 2018. And if folks remember, there was a lot going on back then. And um, so I took over and, you know, it's been a learning curve and uh, I'm still learning every day. And um, currently I live in Newfane with my husband of 10 years. Um, we have a blended family of five adult children, all out of the house. But we have five grandkids that, um, you know, they age from one and a half to 15 years of age. So my firstborn grandchild it just got his um, learner's permit. So you talk about aging, okay? And if you're following these dates, you're going to figure out, too, <laughs> just how old I am. Um, so fast forward, community, right? We hear the word all the time. A group of people living in the same place or having a particular characteristic or interest in common. Very important. Um, I see pockets in the community. And business owners, organic farmers, the arts community, youth and families, vulnerable folks, contractors, and we're all coexisting together. And we all have an interest in this place, in our community. And you know something I call Putney our community? It's my community too. Because I care about Putney, I care about the people, and I care about the direction it's gonna go. Um, the last two years have been very challenging for a lot of people. Um, I blame most of it on COVID. People were isolated. And as we look around today, you know, we're dealing with inflation, the housing crisis, childcare crisis, 
tax stabilization, opioids, aging population, food security, climate change, economic development. Those are all big items. Um, back in 1963, John F. Kennedy was assassinated, and that was the year I was born. And I'm quoting JFK. Change is the law of life, and those who look only to the past and present are certain to miss the future. So, <clears throat> as I look at the future, you know, the other challenges we face right now is sustainability, viability, division for some, public investment. And how do we change that? Because it impacts a lot of different areas in our life. And not only as adults, but the next generation, right? Our kids, our grandkids, and, and you know, down the line. So back to community, right? The group of people living in the same place for a common interest. Synergy, the ability to produce a combined effect greater than the sum of their separate effects. We can't do this alone. That's why we have community, right? So there are many opportunities right now, and I have certain goals for Putney, and I'm sure other people here feel the same way. So goals have to be specific and measurable, and goals that are attain attainable and relevant to what we seek for our community. You know, we can look at the outside and we see, you know, the infrastructure, you know, the sidewalks for mobility and the wastewater treatment plant and our buildings and our bridges and our roads, right? But we also have to look at, you know, natural resources, education, you know, water and nature. You know, those are all important elements and components. And capital, what's socially beneficial or resources, right, to take care of our community? What I see is human capital being priority number one, because without it, we can't foster innovation, diversity, growth, relationships, collaboration, cohesion, adaptation, inclusion, confidence, equality, vibrancy, resilience, sustainability, social culture. Innovation equals education and natu natural resources, which are found in human capital. Now, I'm getting all of this, by the way, from Leadership Southeast Vermont, which I think Jeanette White is a program that um, she talked to me about. And um, it's opened my eyes quite a bit to um, leadership and how to be a leader. And there are many leaders in this community. We can't do this alone. We have to come together and do it together. Um, Nate mentioned Vermont Council on Rural Development, November 14th at Putney Central School, 430. There's four forums, housing, community connection, Youth Families Agent and Economic Development. This is a very important process, and I ask that we all participate, and I encourage you to be there. Um, there will be three sessions. Um, I'm very excited about this process, 
and I'm excited that we were chosen to do this process because we, we will find out what our opportunities are and we will be connected to the resources that will help us implement the plan so we can progress into the future. Um, another very important um, opportunity is the town plan right now is being amended and the Planning Commission is doing that work. And we're short one member on the Planning Commission. And it's very important that we have um, community engagement in this process because the town plan, I call it the Bible. There's a lot of elements and components in the town plan and that guides the next generation because Honestly, people, I'm, I won't be here forever, so. <laughs> but it's for our, our children's children, too. So please be involved. Um, if you have questions, you can always call the town hall, and we can get you connected. It's about connections. Um, we need you to be engaged and be involved in the process. Um, the system is broken, but we have the tools and the resources to fix it. We are in this together. So be humble and be kind, folks. Thank you. So I was really trying hard to get everybody out by 8 o'clock, and I think we're going to do it. Um, I just want to thank Eleni right there. <laughs> Seriously, before the question was out of my mouth, she said, absolutely, I'll do it. <laughs> I mean, this, this, it's not even a joke. Like, Eleni steps up all the time for this community. And, um, you know, she's got a team of volunteers that helped her tonight, but I want to thank Eleni and the volunteers. Um, I, I do want to thank Mitch for those beautiful portraits that are hanging in the gallery. I want to thank Bal Billy for numerous things, but mostly for tonight, for the recording uh, that we have. And those recordings actually are not on the website yet, but they will be. Um, but they're um, like a podcast kind of thing where you can hear the stories of sort of what, what, what they thought about, which is really great. Um, <laughs> I learned a lot, like I said. Um, David Stern, who shifted his whole rehearsal schedule, he has a Sondheim production, an uh, evening and night music happening, opening tomorrow, and he was gracious enough to shift his rehearsal schedule for us. I want to thank the staff. I want to thank Heather and Barry and Alexandra for really helping. It, this is, it's not, you know. You know, I often get like pegged as like being the guy for next stage, but it's really this whole staff is really killing it. And I want to say thank you to them because they really put in a lot of elbow grease and a lot of hours to make next stage what it is. Um, the board, this board member is here, um, and we'll get to that in a second. But um, I see local businesses in in the audience, and again, I will, I will, I, I want to recognize people here, pure nonprofits, larger community. It's really a beautiful place for me to to move here and when I tell friends in Florida what this place is like, it's like, it's an overwhelming um, response that I feel like I have to give because it never seems to land in terms of like what, what this place really is and the camaraderie and the community. So um, I'll just finish up here. When moving up here, a friend of mine who runs Erie Arts and Culture sent me a book. He said, you need to read this book before you move up there. And I said, okay, it's called um, Building Communities, Not Audiences. Um, it's been a guiding principle since my arrival. Um, if you think that uh, uh, Next Stage is just about uh, having an audience come out to see a show, it's that you're missing the mark. It's about building a community of people that support, care, nurture one another. Um, while this theater is one of the best places to see a performance in the area, I view the organization as more relevant than just a great place to see a concert. The programming we do is meant to be a binding agent for our community, a support structure for our village core, and a beacon for our community. My hope is that tonight inspires some of us to build new relationships, creates a renewed sense of activism, and reminds us of our capability to use creative tension 
I like that word, um, when it, in relationship to the stories, to form something larger than the sum of our, its parts. Our dollars are our votes, and we need to support our local businesses, nonprofits, and organizations if we want them to continue into the future. Nothing should be taken for granted. Those businesses that existed in Putney did not, nobody imagined that they would go out of business. And so if we don't support them with, with a passion, we can't be shocked when they close. So it's a garden that needs careful tending. A stage provides a message, giving an opportunity for voices to carry far and wide. It serves a broader purpose as a community support structure. The metaphor of stage as structure for social, civic, creative community support is what brings us here tonight. We wish to honor the legacy of these individuals in the room whose work enhanced our village and our region, and I hope it inspires us all to take up that mantle and carry it into the... So that's a unique dynamic that we have. And so, like, I see Greg, right? I see, I see my, local, my local mechanic who, who, who is there for me. He literally shows up to the field when my truck breaks down <laughs> to tow it. Right, and then I see Justin was here, is here, right there. I get my chickens from Justin, right? And it's like, it's like there's, and 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 Chip is our architect who who built our house, right? And the Dodges have this amazing local winery here. C Barry, can you turn on the lights? I just really, I see, I see Sandglass here, right? I see who are my people here? I see Julie, my sound guy, you know, who who designed, helped design this sound space. Maria, the former executive director of Next Stage. I mean, these are who is Simone from Scott Farm, I see the G-Store. Barry, I need more lights in the theater, not less. Come on, man, you're killing me. Right? You know, the Tepfers invited us over for Shabbat dinner. I mean, there's just so much richness of community here, right? I see, I see my, my, my teachers are here, right? My, my children's teachers, not my teachers. Mr. T is, is he, you could be my music teacher anytime you want, Mr. T, right? I see, I see the food shelf is here. Nancy Olson is here. I see the library here. The town is here. Senator White, she didn't mention that she's our, our outgoing state senator, but Senator White is here. I mean, there's just so much richness to our community that take an opportunity to engage with a human you don't know that's living in your community and say, Keith said I have to buy you lunch. Just do it, right? And I just want to say, um, you know, the Meet Your New Neighbor folks are here, and our legacy people are here, and, and the intention is, as we move forward with these opportunities, f not only learning from what the library told us, and we have the opportunity on Monday to show up for the VCRD process, which I really hope everybody shows up to. We have this ARPA funding. The, there's, there's state, the, the ARPA funding is not also just for Putney. There's money flowing through the state, and they don't even know how to spend it all. They're really confused. Let's give them a reason to, to shower money in our region, in our area, by showing up and putting out these things. Um, and so I think I should uh, shut up now, other than to say um, this tonight has been live streamed, and so the link is on YouTube. If anybody wants to share this out with community members that couldn't make it here tonight, I'm more than happy to share that link out with, with anyone and everyone. I want to thank Billy and John and Heather and Lisa and Mike and Amber and Nate and Jeanette and Karen for being here, supporting us as we look to the future. So thank you guys for showing up tonight. Yeah.